Okay, hi there, and uh, welcome to a revision video on microeconomics covering information failure. It's important to have good examples of potential information failure in markets. This is a favourite topic for examiners because information failure affects the choices that people make, and those choices then impact on the outcomes in different markets, which have consequences for economic welfare, but also from a social welfare point of view, in particular when you link information failure to externalities. So loads of examples here of information gaps, uh, perhaps people underestimating some of the consequences of, uh, of using tanning salons, uh, the economics of addiction to painkillers and other drugs, the complexity of finding the right course to go to at university. A uh, long-term issue is that people don't seem to be saving enough for retirement. Is that a fundamental information issue? The classic examples of information in the used car or the used product market. Are you going to get a lemon as a used car, a dud car, or are you going to get a peach? The economics of addiction to computer games and energy drinks is topic at the moment. So too, uh, cowboy builders and rip-off merchants in the, in the construction sector. And perhaps the most topical information failure of the age of the moment is the anti-vaccination movement, which is by and largely uh, focused in the United States but it's spread to other countries as well. When it comes to analysis diagrams, it's important to use cost and benefit uh, diagrams here. I'll take you through three examples. It really depends on the context in which you're going to write your answer. In this situation, uh, individuals may have imperfect information about their own benefit of consumption. So in other words, with limited information, they would consume quantity Q2. But if they had fuller information, perhaps uh, about the, the product isn't as good for them as they thought it was, then the marginal private benefit curve would be lower, it would be down to the left, and as a result, consumption would fall to Q1. So in this situation, market demand would be lower if consumers had better information. A slightly different way of looking at it is to think about cost. So people, again, may have imperfect information, an information gap, about the cost of their own consumption, the cost to them. Who knows, the, the costs of overconsumption of I don't know, sports, nutritional supplements, for example, or smoking or gambling, the cost to them, not just now, but going forward over many years, 15, 20 years later. And if people had better information about their own internal cost, then their perceived marginal private cost would be higher, as you can see in the diagram. For a given level of benefit, that would lead to a fall in uh, consumption. Again, market demand would be lower if consumers had better information about their own costs. Sometimes, however, people underconsume something. Perhaps they're consuming something which, in theory, they would like. You know, they, they don't have enough, enough information about. So, in this situation, if they had better information, who knows? Healthy eating, that kind of stuff. The nutritional benefits of exercise and healthy eating, or the, the or the social, but the private benefits of joining a club or or, or joining a, a community of some type. If they had better information, their demand for the product or for the service might be higher. Of course, that's the job of persuading advertising, isn't it? To, uh, to try and persuade you that something's better for you than you first thought. Uh, a really key part of any revision on information failure needs to be the concept of asymmetric information. Now, asymmetric information which is where there's an imbalance in information between the buyer and the seller. And this imbalance can certainly distort the choices we make. Asymmetric information is a type of information failure. It's all part of the same discussion, same, same part of the same topic analysis. OK, loads of good examples. A used car, the probably the, the seller knows more than the buyer. Insider dealing in uh, in financial uh, markets such as stocks and shares, tenants and landlord. The the landlord nearly always knows more about their property than the potential tenant uh, and until, of course, the tenant comes to move out. They know a lot more about it. Product warranties, the likelihood of a, of a washing machine or a dishwasher breaking down, for example. Asymmetric information in financial markets in terms of credit risk, risk-facing borrowers and lenders. Asymmetric information in the health industries. Um, well, in theory, doctors have superior knowledge about drugs and treatments, but patients may have more knowledge about pre-existing conditions and lifestyle. 
So loads of asymmetric information in the healthcare and health insurance market. You can see here there's there's lots of examples that the examiners could could focus on. And then you think about how to overcome information failure. Well, information failure can lead to market failure because it can lead to suboptimal choices being made. Uh, it can lead to negative externalities or positive externalities and again a second round market failure. And crucially, it can lead to an inefficient allocation of scarce resources. So there is a case for some form or forms of government intervention to help overcome information failure. Good, perhaps, to add one or two more examples uh, using this slide to your revision notes. So compulsory, for example, compulsory health warnings on, on cigarettes, which seem to get more graphic um, year by year. Uh, the, the quality of and the insistence on different types of nutritional labelling on, on food products and sandwiches and things. The famous case, of course, with Pret a few months ago about allergy uh, risks and things for consumers. Uh, gambling aware information campaigns. Um, when the fun stops, stop. Not the case with this webinar, of course. Industry standards, basic industry standards affecting uh, things like car parts and electrical products, which people can come to rely on. Consumer protection laws, if you buy something which turns out to be faulty, the right to take it back. And also, crucially, sometimes just compulsion and changing the default. Two examples, perhaps making vaccination programmes for under five compulsory, as is happening in, in some countries. In Italy, for example, they've moved to make vaccinations compulsory by law and changing the default. So now, for example, people in a workplace scenario, in a job, uh, they are auto-enrolled into an occupational pension scheme. The default is that you're in the pension scheme. You have to opt out instead of the reverse. Now, the evaluation points. First of all, I think information failure is inevitable, especially in a world of product complexity. Increasingly, the goods and services we buy are very complex and uh, it's very hard to make a, a fully informed and therefore fully rational decision. Secondly, you may have come across a concept called the paradox of choice. Barry Swartz's idea of the paradox of choice. Fantastic idea to use. This is the, the thought that choice in theory intuitively is good for us. We like to have a choice of products, but actually perhaps we're overloaded with choice. Choice overload can uh, create a, a significant drain on our mental resources. It can distort our decisions. People have bounded rationality as well as bounded self-control. They don't necessarily have the, the capacity and the energy and the, uh, and the, if you like, the brain power to be able to make a single choice amongst so many options. Fake news, misleading advertising, all of these things are prominent at the moment. They can damage the sovereignty of the consumer and lead to allocative inefficiency. It's also, I thought, important to link information failure to externalities, particularly if you're studying merit and demerit goods. Those two types of information, those two types of market failure are very strongly linked together. Information failure can also have a, an issue to do with equity and inequality. So, for example, uh, students from poor backgrounds or maybe students of, uh, attending schools that don't have a track record in sending students to the top most competitive universities, they may well find it hard to access the information and access the, the advice, the specialist help that can get them onto those top courses. I think with information failure, it's also quite hard to avoid making a value judgment. So what is a merit good? Should the government, through behavioural nudges, for example, be seeking to influence our choices? Is paternalism uh, good for us in the long term? Behavioural interventions can make a difference uh, at the margins, perhaps, but uh, conceivably harder nudges need to be needed at times. For example, compulsory vaccinations. One final point, which I think is really good for evaluation. In a world of technology and the flood of information and you know easy access to lots of news, in theory, new technology helps to improve consumer information. It helps to improve our awareness, for example. TripAdvisor, Amazon reviews, all that kind of stuff. However, pardon me, <clears throat> is this information, is this wave of information, is it actually causing fresh, further, deeper information failures? The problem of fake reviews, click farms to to create a fake popularity, not something that we suffer from here, 
uh, that these are issues that you can raise as part of your evaluation. Information failure is one of those really quite interesting micro topics. It's well worth revising well, and uh, hopefully you'll write a good answer. Thank you.